The latest open rescue trial and the article here asks, do people have the right to rescue animals from suffering? Seems like a no-brainer, doesn't it? You'd like, if you saw a dog that was being beaten, a lot of us would be like, ah, I'm going to stop that from happening because I don't like that. So it seems like uh, kind of a no-brainer, but of course it's not in our backwards world. And so that, that question could be answered in Sonoma, Sonoma County right now in Northern California. The defendants, Wayne Siung, uh, Cassandra King, and Priya Sani face trespass charges for providing medical care and removing 70 chickens and ducks from three different factory farms um, that are up there in Northern California. The tactic known as open rescue is growing in popularity amongst animal rights activists and often takes place in broad daylight. Uh, but a lot of this is uh, about far more than just rescuing animals in terms of this kangaroo court, what the witnesses they're allowing, the witnesses they're not allowing, more importantly, uh, and how they're not really allowing people to defend themselves or have a fair trial. So to get into that, I have the lead organizer for, or one of the lead organizers for Direct Action Everywhere. They do amazing work. And joining me now is Almira Tannen. Oh, sorry, Tanner. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Yeah, thanks for being here, Almira. Um, I, I let's let's start from the beginning because I know my little uh, summary did not did not do it justice. So uh, why don't you start out by explaining to people what exactly the 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 action was and the trials about, and then we can get into uh, how this is uh, kind of a faux trial, but. Yeah, I mean, in some ways, this case is really complicated. It spans three different actions, over 100 felony arrests, 70 animals rescued. Um, at one point, I think over 50 or at least over 40 felony charges that were actually filed against activists. So it is very complicated. But ultimately, it is actually really simple. Like you mentioned, do people have the right to rescue sick and suffering animals? Should animals be sick and suffering? for you know this our food system here in this country and um so essentially what happened was there was a series of actions in sonoma county in 2018 and 2019 where people went to farms um, big commercial industrial farms that were raising animals for duck meat chicken meat and also for eggs and this was after many months of reporting this cruelty to authorities so whistleblowers had gone in they documented it sent it mm -hmm. to the DA and every person we could possibly think of that could do something about this. Nobody did anything. And, and just ourselves. to be clear, when, when, when we say in when people say industrial farms, it, I often call them torture farms. It's, it really is the most horrific conditions you can ever imagine for a living thing to be in. And uh, it, it is very different from what people on average view as a farm people in the, have that picture in their head right the, the the rolling green hills and a cow wandering around and this is the polar opposite this is uh, in, in th animals stuck in cages they can't even turn around in their entire lives that aren't even big enough to turn around and it, it it really is a horror show and so yeah it, it really we need we need a new term that does not have the word farm in it i guess <laughs> for sure yeah i mean some of these facilities have over 400,000 animals on them many of whom literally never go outside um, never get to go outside never get to see the sun there's ducks who never get the chance to go in a pond which is like ducks they they want to swim right. and all of this and they're stuck on wire cages and um, you know, on wire floors. So yeah, after repeated failure of authorities to do anything about this, uh, myself and hundreds of others went to these facilities, broad daylight, totally nonviolently, and went and documented the conditions and removed animals who were sick and suffering. And that landed me um, and five of my co-defendants with like seven felony charges at one point. Um, most of them were bumped up to eight for the other defendants for what? these really nonviolent actions and what, what, what not that they're legit yeah. but what are these what were these felony <laughs> charges now you're gonna put me on the spot i won't be able to remember all of them but you know burglary really um, idea, yeah. i think there was at one point grand theft of vegetables and fruit because grand uh, theft yeah. yes chickens were kind of i guess clumped into these vegetables and a lot of conspiracy charges because they singled us out as you know, the leaders um, in backroom conversations that the authorities have had with the farming community 
in, um, and I, yeah, I say farming community in Sonoma County, they said, we want to cut the head off the snake, like direct quote, um, in terms of who's in the leadership, let's try to take them out, essentially. I don't think they mean, they don't mean assassinate, but they mean throw in prison yeah. in order to kind of stop this movement. Um, and and basically, uh, yeah, lawfare assault on the the most active people in direct action everywhere. For sure. I mean, it's a completely political prosecution um, where, you know, so in some cases, literally what the person did was stand on public property and make a speech and that landed them with a felony charge. So so why are you not a part of the defense anymore? Yeah. So started with six uh, and actually even within the last week, there's been changes in Wayne. Um, the co-founder of DXC is actually the only remaining defendant. So myself and John and Rachel and eventually Priya ended up taking plea deals um, myself just speaking for myself, I'm not a U.S. citizen. And um, the charges that were leveled against me completely overblown, but could have resulted in pretty serious immigration consequences. And so, um, you know, made the hard decision to take that deal. I don't, I didn't have to plead guilty. Um, I wouldn't have done that. I wouldn't have expressed any sort of remorse for my actions because I don't feel bad about them. And I think that they were the lawful and right thing to do, but that's why I'm not in the case anymore. And Wayne now is the sole defendant. Um, the other person in the case, surprisingly, um, the first day of trial, the prosecutor just announced he was dismissing all of her charges. That was Cassie. Don't exactly know why, um, but yeah, so we started with six and now we're down to one. And the prosecution and the judge has made it an incredibly difficult battle so far. So we started trial over three weeks ago. We have not even begun jury selection yet. The entire last three weeks have been focused on all of these pre-trial issues around what evidence we're allowed to present and what witnesses are even allowed to be called. And I think you alluded to this in your introduction of how absurd this is that we are not going to be able to show the jury the full picture. They're not letting us talk about the conditions of the animals um, beforehand, before the actions. They're not allowing us to talk about the meetings that we literally had with Sonoma County authorities being like, hey, there's this horrible cruelty happening on your farms. What are you going to do about it? Not allowed to talk about that. We had a veterinarian who was mandated by the judge to fly all the way in from Arizona to show up in court. And then the judge didn't even hear her testimony and she excluded her. And this is a, a veterinarian who actually had previously inspected this duck farm, um, like a sanctioned visit that she went years earlier and documented horrific conditions at this farm. And, you know, we're like, hey, nothing has changed. This veterinarian actually saw the exact same thing. The footage looks the essentially the same other than the camera quality has slightly increased over the past few years. And yet no, nothing is being done to help these ducks. And the judge made her fly in and didn't even listen to her and said, no, she can't testify. This is irrelevant to the case. Um, most, most things the judge has deemed as irrelevant. And I think that just kind of goes to show that they are so set on limiting the scope of what is allowed to be presented because ultimately the average person, they see animal suffering. Like you said, you see a dog being beaten, you see a chicken who's suffering and we have like this inherent compassion for them. We've seen that in the past two trials that were very similar to this, where people were acquitted by a jury. Uh, and I think that this prosecution has learned a little bit from that um, and is trying very, very hard to get a conviction, which is hard to do when the defendant is there helping animals. Yeah, and, and we've seen this actually in a lot of areas that are not just about uh, helping animals, where the U.S. court system tries to limit the scope of the trial so much because they know that if the jury hears the reality, the entire reality of the situation, they're going to consider that these people should have acted the way they did or that they at, ver at, at very least should not be locked up for what they did. And so you see this with uh, other environmental fighters, tree sitters, pipeline fighters. You see it with whistleblowers. Uh, they, they basically just the, the courts won't allow any witnesses, won't allow you to speak about why you did what you did. And then they call it a fair trial. But it's the polar opposite. You can't have a trial without information.